All right, let's go step by step on my computer and show you all the settings I change to take my own personal router and hook it up to my internet service provider's gateway that they give me because I want to use my own router for my own settings. And there are some um, things that you have to do and change so that they work seamlessly together. Now, this is Nate, and this is the Nate or Tater channel. I have lots of content about tools, technology, and the outdoors, and specifically a lot of things about Verizon Home Internet and T-Mobile Home Internet as well. So for this video, I'm going to talk about the Verizon Home Internet specifically, but this stuff really applies to all um, gateways and routers in general terms, and I'll have more videos out there about specific gateways as well. So for this one, this one is the Verizon Cube gateway, and the only catch to that is that they actually have two that look identical on the outside. This one is the ASCII one, and so if you look at the bottom of it by the Ethernet and power ports, there's a sticker and it has a uh, SKU or a SKUI. Uh, call out on there and if it starts with ASK then that is this one that we're talking about they have also an ARC one and that one is uh, similar but slightly different for the um, web interface so for me I, on my personal side my personal router I'm using an Asus AI mesh system I actually have six different routers throughout my property there's actually four different buildings that I have these routers in and they're connected with a mix of Ethernet and Wi-Fi bridges and all kinds of stuff. And so it covers multiple acres of Wi-Fi coverage. And obviously a single device will not do that. So that's why I personally am using my own setup. I also do some port forwarding and some other advanced features that I like to have my own control over. So that's why I'm doing it. You might have your own needs. You might uh, have specific um, you know, maybe parental controls or firewall needs or port forwarding or hosting a VPN, whatever you're doing, um, you know, you should, you probably know what that is and what you need to do. If you don't know why you want to use your own personal router and you don't have a specific need, I would tell you not to do it. Um, it just complicates things. So I would say just use the stock built in one. If the uh, Wi Fi coverage is good enough for you, they're actually pretty good. Wi Fi 6 is, is pretty good at covering. Uh, most regular houses, I mean, um, 3,000, 4,000 square feet, if you place them correctly, uh, they will still cover that size house. So um, the only trick I'll tell you, if you uh, do go that way where you don't really have a need for your own personal router, is the trick is you can go into the settings and change the Wi-Fi SSID or the Wi-Fi name uh, to whatever your existing one is. And if you do that, you can actually uh, turn off your existing router you know, update the Wi-Fi name on here on the gateway, and then all your devices will automatically connect and switch over to this unit, and you won't have to change any settings on your smart TV, your phones, your computers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but let's go into the settings here and show you what I've done to make mine work seamlessly together. All right, so the first step is this computer is plugged into the Asus AI Mesh router actually already but you could um, be connected directly to the Verizon unit if you wanted to. And I typed in the 192.168.12.1 address, and then that asks you for a login. This login information on the bottom of the, the gateway. So I'm gonna type in my password here and log into it. So now this is the web interface for this gateway. Again, this is the ASCII version. So in here I can see a few things that are um, you know that I change basically and so the first thing is that I turn off the Wi-Fi and this is not required okay but there's a lot of good reasons why you'd want to do it um, you again don't have to but there's a couple things one is it reduces the heat dissipation of these gateways um, I've seen them get hot and derate and actually slow down your internet as well as it takes up processing power so the gateway will work better and faster with the Wi-Fi turned off and it will run cooler so I go in here to the 2.4 gigahertz and I turn it off and I go into the 5 gigahertz and I also turn that off again if you really wanted to you could leave one or both of them on and um, and that's fine if you weren't using your own router this is where you go in here and change the SSID to something new so next I go to my uh, network and just to show you kind of what my network looks like is I have the gateway hooked up to the internet and then according to it I only have one device connected to it and that is my main ASUS router 
but in reality, you know, that has like, you know, 60, 70 devices connected through it um, after that. So if I go down here to the LAN settings, this is where you can see the IP address of the gateway. And if you really wanted to change it to something else, you could, but there's uh, not much of a need to do that. Here is one setting, the IP pass-through. This actually on the ASCII has been a little cantankerous. They added this uh, fairly recently here in the summer of 2022, but it has a glitch in it. Um, and so what IP pass-through does is it basically gives the public WAN IP address that like Verizon has, and it passes it through to your own personal router. And that's really great for things like if you have a DDNS service or you have um, some other need of uh, connecting directly to your own personal router, you need that public IP address to really do that. And that's the cleanest way, but the problem is every time it goes into refresh, which I think is like 24 or 48 hours when it pulls a new or even just refreshes the, the um, public IP, I've noticed that it drops internet connection. So I've left it off, but ideally I would have this IP pass through turned on actually. So um, that's something that I would like to do, but I haven't done with the software update until um, they, they get that corrected. But you'll notice another thing here is I turn off DHCP. So this confuses a lot of people because I'll tell them turn off the DHCP server and I can understand why it's confusing and I'll show you here in a minute on my ASUS router um, what how it can confuse people this is the Verizon's gateway DHCP server where it assigns IP addresses to different devices and I've turned that off and the reason I've done that is again this one is also a semi not required one but um, it has conflicts or has issues um, several times that actually on my specific setup if I leave this on the speed of my ASUS setup gets cut in half so if I have 300 megabit per second uh, service on the gateway if I were to have that on and have DHCP server on my ASUS I get 150 megabits per second service uh, to be honest with you I don't know exactly why that happens but I know that turning off DHCP server on at least one of them fixes that problem that's another layer of NAT or network address translation and um, the only thing to know here is that if you turn this off then your personal router or any computer you hook up to it will not get an IP address and it will not connect it you won't even be able to go back to this website so the first thing you need to do before you turn that off is go into your own personal setup and in here so this is the ASUS this is the RTAC88U if I go in here to its WAN settings, you can see my WAN connection type. By default, it's typically going to be automatic IP, which means uh, sometimes I'll be listed as a DHCP uh, or dynamic IP, which means it's trying to um, receive an IP address from the gateway. And that's what it would get if it, um, if it had the DHCP server on. With it off, it doesn't get that. So you have to manually set it with a static IP and it has to be in the range of IP addresses that the gateway is expecting. So the gateway again is the Verizon one. You can see that its IP address is the um, 12.1 and its IP address pool that it's expecting is from 1 to 254. Obviously 1 is the gateway itself so you can't have that. And I just picked 254 as the last number um, but you can pick anything, you can pick a 2, 3, 4, 50, wh whatever you want uh, between those two numbers. So I picked 254, so I had to type this in manually, and the subnet mask is the 255.255.255.0, and the default gateway is that 12.1 that we already know about. So that's what you have to set up, and then this is another place where, you know, if you are an advanced user, you obviously can set your own DNS server, um, based off your own personal needs. So you need to go in there and you can do this static IP while the Verizon gateway still has a DHCP server on. It's not going to hurt anything. So go ahead and do that first on your router. Get a static IP and then you go back to this Verizon gateway and now you can turn off the DHCP server and save it and now um, that will be off. So that's kind of step one I would say that I've done the next one is the IPv6. 
Uh, I do enable that. You know, a lot of people aren't really utilizing IPv6. It's like the next generation of how they assign IP addresses, and it actually kind of uh, foregoes the needs for like port forwarding and stuff. I won't get into too many details there, but in general, I would say I try to have it on and active throughout my system. So if something can utilize it, it has the ability to. All right, and then so next, if we go down here on this gateway, the next um, key place is the DMZ. So this is under NAT forwarding, and this is where, you know, this Verizon gateway doesn't have a full bridge mode. If it had a full bridge mode where it truly acted as just a modem, then I wouldn't need the IP pass through or this DMZ setting to get those features. It would kind of do that stuff automatically, but since it doesn't, I have to go in here and pick this DMZ, which I think stands for Demilitarized Zone, which is kind of obviously a little bit of an archaic um, acronym there. But it basically means that all the inbound traffic, so any traffic that's coming from um, the public internet side and coming into your network with the DMZ, instead of it getting blocked by the firewall in this gateway or trying to be routed based off its um, settings, it's going to go ahead and send all that inbound traffic to this specific, they call it a client, but specific device. And so what that's doing is uh, basically bypassing the firewall and security and everything of the Verizon gateway and passing on all the, um, the uh, packets to your own personal router. So turn that DMZ on and then you can um, hit this drop down. If there's anything plugged in, it will show up here. So this is my own personal router, my ASUS router. You can also do it manually um, by the MAC address and or the IP address that you can see there. So this one you can see my DMZ local host IP address is this 12.254, which is my ASUS router, my main router. So this means all that inbound traffic comes to here. You can also go in here to security if you wanted to and you could mess with the firewall settings where you know I have turned them down to um, to lower settings but again the DMZ really should be bypassing that anyway so that's kind of the key thing on the gateway to set up and that's where I'm basically just trying to pass all of the processing all the DHCP all that kind of stuff over to my own personal uh, router setup now once I've done that and we've already set up the WAN I actually have um, a dual WAN set up You'll notice in here, there's also things like DMZ um, and NAT pass-through. So this would be the, you know, doing it again, but this doesn't change anything on the gateway. This would be changing it on your ASUS router to something further downstream. So you don't need to change or enable DMZ on your own personal uh, router unless you know you have a specific need for something like that as well. And this is where here in LAN, you can see it has its own DHCP server and this is what you do want to have on and you can see that I have a different IP address pool that is not the 12 dot something it's a zero dot something and you do want them to be separate so you don't have any any IP conflicts uh, there alright so if you don't want your own personal router to actually do a lot of the uh, DHCP and routing stuff then you can actually put it into something like its own bridge mode or access repeater mode. And so for this one, I go into the administration tab and then in here, there's the operation mode. So for ASUS, you know, the default is this wireless router mode and um, they also have the access point mode. And this would be, um, you know, where it is basically just acting as a wireless access point for clients to connect but then all of the NAT and all of the um, routing occurs somewhere upstream. And so me personally, I don't like that because I want my ACES setup to own all of that routing stuff, so I leave it in the router mode. All right, so that's really all there is to it. That should give you the same speed as though you're connected directly to the Verizon gateway itself. If you have a slowdown, that means there might be a configuration that's messed up. If you have any questions please put them in the comments down below and then of course if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up like button consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for more content if you have a specific question about your own router or your own ISP put it in the comments I will try to get to it and I will try to answer it and get
give you some advice or some tips uh, as well. So thanks for watching.